And that was Gnarls Barkley with Crazy here on Rise Up with B-Day Walters broadcasting live on Party 93.4 FM, Party 94.9 FM in Hudson Valley, New York, worldwide on Party934.com. And the video is streaming on Justin.tv forward slash B-Day Walters. So, you know, I say every week that you can submit questions to me through um, a website called FormSpring, which is FormSpring, like membership form, F-O-R-M, spring like the season, dot M-E, like me, forward slash B Dave Walters, FormSpring dot M-E, forward slash B Dave Walters. And you guys really listened, and I got dozens of questions in, and I really appreciate that. But the problem is, they were questions like, what's the last good book you read? You know, uh, who's the smartest person you know? If you could go on vacation anywhere, where would you go? And that's all well and good. And I'm, I'm going to write, I'll do an article where I respond to that stuff. But here on the radio, I'm trying to help with like, you know, the significant <laughs> problems. So if there's a problem you have in your relationship, a spiritual question, like I, I, this question about the Kabbalah, hopefully was answered at length. <laughs> <laughs> so you can ask me anything. You can even ask anonymously, formspring.me forward slash B Dave Walters. And like I was saying before, you can find me anywhere at B Dave Walters. The video recordings are up on YouTube, forward slash B Dave Walters, on my Facebook fan page, facebook.com forward slash B Dave Walters. I'm up on Twitter. You might imagine it is, in fact, at B Dave Walters. So you can find me anywhere. Now, I, I just want to say that, first of all, thank you for, for, for listening. As always, I appreciate it. If you value these things that I do, please tell your friends, tell your family, send people the recording, post links up on your fan page, because the, the way that we spread the word is by sharing things that we think are valuable. And if you, if you take anything from these shows that you listen to or my articles that you read on examiner.com or anything that I do, please share it with somebody that you think is going to help, because that's, that is the best compliment I get for what I do is when people tell me things like I loved it I got to make sure that my mom hears it you know I, I loved it that's that was exactly what I'm dealing with right now and you really hit the nail on the head so that's cool and I, I really appreciate that so thank you thank you for being you now all of these different ideas that I put out there if, if you're not careful it can kind of make you a little crazy, <laughs> which is why I shared that cra crazy with you there. And it's it's really helpful if you can kind of just there, – there's a quote from Aristotle. The, the mark of an educated mind is to be able to entertain an idea without accepting it. That, as I said, you just have to try these things on. And when you realize, as I've said and we'll say again and again, that nobody knows – 100% where we come from or what happens when we die. Nobody knows. But when you can accept that, it kind of makes life actually much easier uh, because a lot of times the people that cling so tightly to being right, they cling so tightly to my religious view is the only way, my political view is the only way, my, my, my sports view is the only way. The people that cling so tightly to it, believe it or not, are the ones that have the least faith. Those are the ones that have the least connection to things because if you're truly comfortable in your own skin and you're truly comfortable in your position and relationship with your creator then you're not really threatened by what anybody else believes because really what, what difference does it make right because as I said we all walk the path alone and when I go to my judgment or whatever's going to happen, and I stand before God, and there's, you know, they got the, <laughs> the, the, the list of what I did and didn't do. All I can say to God is I tried my best. I tried my best. You know, my, my own personal spirituality has evolved a lot from my Southern Baptist roots. You know, <laughs> some would say it's evolved too far, but I'm going to be like, I'm sorry, God, you gave me this mind, you gave me this perception, and you gave me the opportunities to learn all this stuff, and I just kind of went out and did it. <laughs> and if that was wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't help myself, right? So you know, I don't necessarily be afraid to question. Don't necessarily be afraid to doubt. Because I think, I think, the same creator that gave you the capacity to question 
didn't really actually this is another favorite quote of mine it's like i don't think the same god that endowed me with sense perception and reason intended me not to use them that's from galileo galilee and i kind of changed it a little bit there because you know galileo got in trouble for observing the heavens and realizing that you know the earth went around the sun and the church didn't want to hear that especially because people are like no you look in the sky the, the sun's right there obviously the sun's going around us because if you just looked it looked like it made sense and galileo was like no no don't think so and they kind of killed him over it <laughs> kind of killed him over it you remember when we talked about the cave plato's cave that if you come and you try and pull people out of the darkness, not only will they not come with you, they kind of get pissed off and violent. <laughs> you know, most people don't like having the boat rocked. Most people don't like having their assumptions questioned. But that doesn't have to be you. And it becomes a lot easier once you realize that it's just that. It's just assumptions. We don't know. We don't know. We believe. We believe strong. We think we can prove anything that I believe. I can I can tell you why I believe it. I can back it up with, you know, this evidence, that evidence, this scripture, that scripture. And and, and especially people that, that use um, their holy book as proof. I hate to say this. The Bible is not really proof of anything. The Quran is not really proof of anything. You know, the Talmud, the Gita, the I Ching aren't really proof of anything. Why? Because in order for them to prove anything, you have to believe they prove something. <laughs> you know, the people are like, well, the Bible says this. I'm like, yeah, but to somebody that doesn't think the Bible's anything special, that's meaningless. You know, it's just like if you say, well, the Bible says this, and therefore it's true, and a Muslim comes and says, yes, but the Quran says this, and therefore it's true, and you say, no, your Quran is wrong because my Bible's right, well, they feel the exact same way about you. They feel like your Bible's wrong because their Quran is right. In fact, the Quran pretty explicitly says the Bible's wrong and the Quran is right. I don't know if you know that. That, that that's basically the tone of the Quran. Allah says that he they've sent over a hundred thousand different prophets to mankind over time, and that people get it right for a time, and then they get it wrong, and a new prophet has to come along to help them get it right again. And that's who Muhammad was. He was the, the next in the line of prophets. And everybody thinks their revelation is the last one, that, you know, Moses was the final revelation, that Jesus was the final revelation, that Muhammad was the final revelation. After Islam came Manichaeism, and Mani was the final revelation. And now there's Baha'i. I forget the name of the Baha'i prophet guy. That he's like, I'm the final revelation. Um, There is no final revelation. It pretty much keeps coming. And it's going to keep coming as long as we're around. And it's going to keep coming into each individual human life. Does that make sense? That your own personal revelation is unfolding. Your own trip to Damascus is happening now. Does that make sense? That God and the angels and the heavens and the forces and everything are all around you. And they're interacting with you now. Your scripture's being written. Your Bible's being written. Now, let me be clear. I'm not trying to come down on the Bible. Uh, the Bible's great. I read it all the time. I, I like to think I have a decent command of it. And for me, I'm at the stage that, that I'm looking at the Bible not just as this infallible document. Because unfortunately, if you read more than just a little bit of it, you realize there's kind of a lot of contradictions in it. And if there's a lot of contradictions, then it cannot be, you know, this absolute authority. So when you take out of it that may it's not this absolute authority then you can start to see see in context who wrote this when did they write it who did they write it for there's a reason why the book of revelations has a lot of images about rome because at the time rome was kind of stomping the jews into the ground <laughs> and rome was the big bad guy right and when you learn about the, the evolution of the Bible as a document, which is really way more for us to go into than with the time we've got right now, but you start to see that it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot over time. And I've had this conversation with people. They're like, I believe the Bible is absolutely 100% literally true. And I say, okay, which one? King James? New International? Greek Orthodox? Armenian Orthodox? Catholic? Is the English one the absolute truth, or is the Latin one the absolute truth, or the Greek one, 
or the Aramaic one. If you have any experience with a different language, you know that when you translate things, you lose, you lose something, right? So bare minimum, you should be looking at the Aramaic and the Greek ones if you're going to claim that it is the absolute truth. But here's the problem there. Who wrote those Aramaic and Greek ones? Did you know that the earliest, earliest copies of the New Testament that we've still got in existence are from 150 years after Jesus Christ was crucified? That's like if the earliest copy of the Declaration of Independence we had was from the 1950s, and everything besides that was just the stories we've heard. Did you know that? That there, there are, are no Bibles, no writings, Christian writings from when Jesus Christ was actually on the earth, or even when any of the disciples were still on the earth. None of it exists. We don't have it. We have copies, and we have copies of copies. And we can look at the oldest ones, and we can set them side by side, and we can see that they're not the same. And if you don't believe that we can set them side by side and see that they're not the same, there's four little books called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are four different accounts of Jesus Christ's life on earth. Now think about that. Is there any other time that I can tell you four different versions of something, that I can give you four different versions of a movie or four different versions of, a, of an event I witnessed, or if I see a fight and I tell you four different ways, and then you tell me that all four of those things are literally 100% true. Different birth accounts, different accounts of the crucifixion, different accounts of the teaching. And the early church fathers didn't know which one was the literally correct one. And that's why they put all four in there. So the next time somebody tells you that, you know, the Bible is absolutely 100% literally true. I don't mean like true in general, true with a capital T, like literally word for word true. Then you just ask them, well... What were Jesus Christ's dying words? And they'll probably tell you one of them. They'll say, you know, it is finished, or my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But if you actually look, there's different accounts, different accounts. Sometimes it's, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Sometimes it's, it is finished. Sometimes it's, my God, why have you forsaken me? And you got to ask yourself, if you have these people that were there, which even the, the Bible itself says only John and, and the Marys were actually there. But we'll just assume that whoever wrote this down was physically standing at the cross when Jesus died. And they came back and they wrote down three different accounts of what he said. And you got to think, in the Christian faith, the moment that Jesus Christ was crucified was the most pivotal moment, not just in Christianity, but across all time. And it's not 100% clear what happens. Did the earth quake or did it not? Did the sky turn black or did it not? Did the earth shake or did it not? Did dead saints come up out of the tomb or did it not? And I post this question to people and they'll say things like, well, all those things happened, but they just didn't mention it. And I'm all like, okay, so the earth shook and the tabernacle curtain split in half and you noticed that and it just didn't seem like something you should mention, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that the dead rose right then in front of you and that just seemed like something you shouldn't write down, <laughs> you know, that, that the sky turned black. That's just, just something you wouldn't say there, right? The, the, the point I'm making, what, what I'm getting at with this, is we build up these structures in our mind and we build up these walls around our beliefs and they start to become very literal and they start to become very rigid and they start to become very non-constructive right now i've read the different accounts of the gospels i've read other accounts of the gospels things like from the gospel of thomas did you know god thomas had a gospel the gospel of judas did you know judas had a gospel the gospel of mary did you know that mary had a gospel and then around 330 at a place called the Council of Nicaea was the final touches on the Bible as we know it. That a group of people got together, and it was kind of happening before Nicaea. People kind of debate about when it exactly happened. But around then, around the year 330 AD, over 300 years after Jesus Christ died, they started putting the finishing touches on the Bible as we know it. And they started to decide what did and didn't belong and what was and was not worth reading. Now think about that. Now, again, if you run into a Bible thumper and you kind of want to give them a little bit of a mind freak, just tell them, look, I will believe, I'll believe what you say. I will concede that this book is 100% infallible. If you can name for me 